More Postcards with John Hawkins and Bruce Craig. These videos were converted from VHS tape, and the title on this one says Part 7. Welcome to Caldwell County today. My name is John Hawkins. I'm the director of the Caldwell Heritage Museum. With me again today is Bruce Craig, and this is, I believe, our sixth time together. And Bruce is going to be talking today about uh, some postcards uh, that he's collected of Lenore and Caldwell County and other interesting things. Uh, welcome, Bruce. Well, thank you, John. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, and we've, we've shown postcards before, but I think they've only ever seen, the folks out there have only seen maybe 35 or 40 of these postcards. And I've had a lot of people to comment that I do have, you know, around 125 different. Okay, so we're hopefully, if we've got the time, we're going to show all of these postcards. It'll be grouped together, but it'll be showing the different types of postcards and, you know, and then maybe just all the postcards that we can show today and different things. Okay, you do have quite a stack there, Bruce, so let's get on with it. What do you have to show us first? Well, the first thing I want to show you, which to me is a, a very important part of the history of not only Lenore, but this is Lenore. Uh, this is the when the air mail, the first air mail started in 1937. And what the post office would do is sometimes just put an address on there. There's nothing in these envelopes. But they would put stamps on them, and then that, that was the first air mail, and it was on the first day that it started here in Lenore. And uh, there's one of those that's actually signed by the postmaster of Lenore, North Carolina. Uh, and it cost six cents to send this air mail. Okay. And... Uh, I believe one of these went to Massachusetts, which was Fall River, Massachusetts. Right. And uh, the other one went to Durham, North Carolina. So here we had one that went in state, but then one that went out of state. So, uh, Was this a test of the airmail system, Bruce, or was it uh, just something that somebody did to have a memento? Well, it's, it's kind of like when they have a, a postage stamp you know, first edition, first edition right. and they put some on and they send them and, and as long as it's been, you know, stamped, canceled, right. canceled, then that makes it a legal tender thing, you know. Oh, I see. Uh, and these things, the first airmail, all North Carolina airmail flights started on October the 11th and went through the 16th of 1937. And both of these postcards uh, are were sent on October the 12th of 1937. That's good, okay. Now, so, all right, what else do you have there? A couple of other things that are real interesting are postcards of a business. And uh, it's the Bank of Lenore, and the one I have in my hand is Lenore, North Carolina, and it's 916 of 1904, and it's telling someone that you know, they have a $38.85 uh, to their credit. And it listed GWF Harper as the president, uh, L, G, G. L. Bernhardt was vice president, and John Harper Bell was the cashier. So, uh, and these are postcards. This one was sent on September the 16th of 1904. And that was telling someone that they had a balance in their account. They had a balance in their account, and evidently that it, they, one went to South Carolina and one went somewhere else, so, you know, they might have had a credit come to this bank, and it's just letting them know that they've got it. But this is postcards that are on, actually a business had their own postcard. Yes, I wish the bank would send me a notice that I had some money in an account. <laughs> Even today, Bruce. <laughs> I understand. Even thirty-eight dollars would be nice. Yeah, even thirty-eight dollars would be nice. Okay, what do you have there, though, as far as postcards is concerned? Well, what I'm going to show is the difference in these postcards because back in the early days, it started out that we had what was known as a white card. Uh, okay. Looks 
looks like there's some scenes of downtown Lenore primarily, well, and we've seen those maybe in other photographs, but you're going to tell us about the postcards. Well, these are all of downtown Lenore, and uh, the difference being is that uh, this top one up here is considered a linen postcard. Right. A linen. Linen, linen texture. It actually looks like it's got a texture in that. And then also, if you'll notice that the back of it, it has a split back, what they call. Okay. Now, you also have what is known as a white card. Uh, and this is a white card without the border. Then you have a white card that has the border. And uh, then you also had what was known as, this is like a photograph, and this is a, you know, they're still both black and whites. Right. And then eventually they got into the colored ones. Right. And uh, you can see the difference in the colors of these things that were produced by different companies. Some of them look faded, some of them are real dark in color and some of them are real vibrant and, and shows right. a lot of different colors. So postcards came in a lot of different varieties. Was that a style of, uh, that a person would choose, Bruce, or was that the technology of the day? Well, it's just what they had at that time. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to show you the, the difference in the backs of these things. Uh, you had what was known as, this is the very first type of postcard is this one right here. It's just a solid back. It has no lines, no nothing. All right. Then it came about that you had a split back that you could write something and then put the address. Right. Then it came with a split back with lines to where, you know, you could put the addresses on them. I remember these two types of postcards myself in my young days. Yeah, but these are, are pretty early postcards Those right early, here. Right. And, you know, I've got some of these, the, probably the earliest postmark I have of one uh, is in 1903. I have several in 1905 and then 07 and on up from there. So, uh, but these cards right here range from about 1903, probably up into the, this one would be in the 30s. Looks like 30s model cars. Yeah. And of course we know these two were after 1910 because they show the uh, Confederate Memorial that used to stand in the center of the street. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, but it looks like some of them may be earlier days in downtown Lenore. Do you have any idea what year this one is? This looks like an early picture to me. Yeah, this one is about 1905. 1905, okay. And then, you know, and, and this is a reason that we have different ones. See, this is a, the exact same picture, but you can see this is on a white card with a border that tells on the bottom about that it's downtown Lenore. And then this one has no border, but it's a different texture on there. So they were, it was the same picture, but they were just published at a little bit different time by a different company. And both of those are South Main Street, the southwest side. Right. Is that the side where Bernhard Siegel is? Absolutely. This right. would have been the Bank of Lenore, which it's not at this time, but that's where the Bank of Lenore right. wound up at, right. on okay. that corner right there. All right. Uh, Bruce, I guess the genesis of anything is an idea. Looks like you have the photographs here that may have been the inspiration for some of the photo for the postcards. Yeah, and it, it shows a little bit different postcards also. All right. Uh, this top one up here, this is an original photograph that was taken by the Wall family, and they produced this postcard. All right. What they done was they didn't like the way that it showed up. So they colored it and put the moon up there and called it a nighttime version of a night view of Lenore, North Carolina is what it's okay. called. Do you have any idea what year that picture was made? That one right there, I don't know. I'm thinking somewhere in the 20s. Right. Now, I'm not sure, but it could be early 30s, late 20s, but that's just, you know. Okay, and is this a photograph that's been reproduced or is it a painting? 
Looks almost like a painting. Yeah, but see, that's where they take some of these postcards and they hand paint these things, okay. a lot of them. And then when once they get one done, then they can reproduce each I one see. of so them. So they took the, f the photograph and added to it. Right. Enhanced it. See, this Much is like people do with computers today. Right. This is what they were looking at when they started. Uh, I see. And so because it looks so bland, it just didn't look good. So they done all this coloring and put the moon up there and made it a night time. Okay, and of course the moon gives connotations of romance and oh yeah, maybe werewolves yeah. too. But uh, at least, but yes, that that has made a nice uh, photograph. Okay, this looks like the square in the uh, courthouse in Lenore. Yeah, uh, that's the old courthouse. Isn't it? Oh yes, yes, the one that's uh, in the middle of the street. This one dates to around 1903, 1904. Now, where this photograph came from was I found the original postcard negative for this postcard right here. And so I took the negative to Joe Hartley and he made this picture from it. And he actually had this on his last show. But it is about 1903. And there again, you see this is the same postcard picture as you have here. All right. Then just a little bit later on, or by another company or whoever produced them, they went out and they made a colored picture of it because the black and white just, you know, the color looks so much better. Okay, Bruce, the, from the angle I am, uh, which one is the courthouse? I can't tell from the, the angle. The courthouse is on the left-hand side over here. Okay, this is the courthouse. That would have been the uh, courthouse that was probably built about 1904. Right. And and then what you're seeing in the cluster of trees would be like where the Hedrick building was, Dr. Hedrick. I see. All right. And then the old Lee and Robbins and okay. got in there. I thought at first that was the courthouse that stood in the middle of the street, and I thought you'd come up with a picture that I had never seen before uh, of that courthouse and was hoping you had. Oh, I, I wish I could too, but, you know, uh, this is, it's not a real common postcard, but it is a little hard to find. All right. Bruce, the back of that postcard says Newton, North Carolina. Now, I, Newton has a nice museum, and uh, I don't think we want to start collecting their material. <laughs> no, but what this is, is whoever produced this postcard, they made a boo-boo. Uh-oh. And what they done, and I never noticed this myself until somebody pointed it out to me. This does say, aerial view of Newton, North Carolina, a textile manufacturing town whose business section lies around the courthouse square. All right, but if you'll notice, it is the exact same postcard as this one, which is showing downtown Lenore. All right. Now this postcard was produced in 1964. This one says the aerial view of Lenore, North Carolina, the county seat of Caldwell County, famous for its furniture known as furniture land. Okay. Now these are aerial views and that's what these two are. Now, this is a prime example of different postcards, different eras. If you will notice the color in this and how much vibrant it is from this one, this card almost looks faded. It is the same postcard, but they were produced at different times, but they were still done by Scott Studio. And I just got to looking at them one day and happened to notice that the one on the right is a linen card and the one on the left is a white card. Yes. And this is an earlier card than this. The earliest I have this one postmark is 1935. I have several of these, but I don't have any postmarks on them, but I know that they're before 1935. So that's a prime example of, you know, the postcards look alike, but actually they're different and they're from different eras. Bruce, it seems like the 30s was the prime era of postcards. Do you have any idea why postcards were so popular in the 30s? seems like they're more popular than they are today. Well, back then when people visited a place, they wanted some remembrance of where they was. And you know, it's like now, if you go to Disney World, you're going to collect something from Disney World and bring it back home. And you're going to pay for it. And you're going to pay for it. But these back in those days were, you know, a penny, two cent, maybe three cent, you know, and it was just something you could spend a little bit of money on and, and you could show people where you had been. And I suppose it was good to send to the folks back home to tell them that you'd arrived safely, you were having a good time and so forth. 
But now, what amazes me is a lot of people bought these things and took them back home. Right. And like, you know, if I find these things on the Internet, then they might come from Washington State or New York State. I've had them, you know, that I've bought them from just about every state, you know. But one thing I do believe is that nobody has ever visited Lenore from Texas because I've never had a postcard come back from Texas. Maybe they've just kept them all in Texas. Well, that's such a big state, I reckon they couldn't figure out how to get out of there. It's the only way I can figure out. <laughs> Perhaps those people, Bruce, are like myself. I'm not a very good photographer, so if I want a good picture of a place I visit, I usually get a postcard, too, and I, sometimes mm -hmm. I snap the picture, but it's not nearly as good as the photograph, of course, that I get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they may have had the same idea back in those days, too. Yeah. Okay, Bruce, these hallowed grounds that we're on right now are the Caldwell Heritage Museum, of course, which is in the last building that uh, was a part of Davenport College. But I see you've got some uh, shots there. Again, various uh, ones. This one is Old Main, which was the uh, first building uh, that the college used. You've got uh, a couple of different angles on it. Uh, then uh, you've got Cornelius Hall, which was the uh, building that was next to the last one to go. I think it was torn down maybe in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then this one is an overview of all of them. And this, of course, is where my finger is, is the, uh, where we are today. Uh, but what can you add to this about uh, these shots of Davenport? Well, this is the only seven cards that I have ever seen that were printed on this college, you know. And a lot of these kids up here, the reason they produced them was they could send home to their mom right. and daddy for more money. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. More money to buy postcards. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, you know, this is a big part of Lenore's history that, Absolutely. You know, that, that we had a college in this town. Right. I had a good friend come from uh, Ohio to see me one time, and I came home, and he was sitting in my driveway. And I said, how did you find me? And he said, well, your address was College Avenue. Said all I had to find out was where was there a college at one time or still, and he got on the street and came right over to my house. Right, I think that's a good thing to point out, Bruce. That the College Avenue is a tribute uh, that's a permanent tribute to the college that used to be here, mm -hmm. and I had never made a connection until some years later when I was a small child. I made a reference to College Avenue. Somebody said, "What college?" I said, "I don't know. I didn't know about Davenport College at that <laughs> time." So. Uh, but yes, it uh, does, th that av the fact that we do have a college avenue, it does remember that there was a college here in addition to this one remaining building that we have. Now, John, while we're on Davenport College and the historical place up here, the museum, uh, maybe this would give you a chance to maybe let the people know of, of a collection of things that are on display at this time. Yes, we do have a few items uh, from Davenport College. We have a Davenport room upstairs. Uh, we have a few pieces of furniture that were owned by uh, Professor Minnick when he was the president of the college in the 1890s. Uh, we have some additional photographs. Uh, we have some uh, programs. And by the way, Bruce, they used to do some wonderful concerts here for the entire town. Uh, good musical concerts and, and various programs. Uh, and uh, so we have some of those programs there. We have some clippings, and uh, we do even have a notebook of the history of Davenport College. If anybody is interested in knowing a little bit about its beginnings, uh, on from the time it was formed in the mid 1850s uh, until uh, it left here in 1933, uh, it certainly our loss that the college left. But I guess the depression had a whole lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Davenport was uh, certainly a great asset to Caldwell County at one time. And it'd be nice if we still had it. I'm glad that we have the community college, though, that's taking up some of that gap, though, that uh, uh, was left with uh, the leaving of Davenport. Well, John, what we're going to show next is the different views and different postcards that are on the courthouse. And some of these things are quite colorful. Uh, some are black and white. And you know, it's amazing that there's only one postcard that has been made of the courthouse 
after changed as far as just the courthouse. And that would be this one right here. Okay. Now, do you remember what year they done that? Was that in the late you mean 20s? The remodeling, taking the columns off? Right. I think I've read somewhere 1929. That's, that was my thing right there. Uh, and in these postcards, there's no linen cards except for maybe the one of the new courthouse. Uh, the rest of them are either uh, white cards, photographs, black and white, or colorful, you know. And the, you'll see three right here that are the exact same picture. Okay, this was in... Uh, somewhere around April or May of 1907. And what they're doing is that they're showing that that's the time that the water was turned on right. in Lenore, North Carolina. City Water Works. City Water Works. And uh, there's one of these postcards that is very, very important to me and to the history. Now these two postcards were exactly the same. They're both white cards with a divided back. But if you will notice, this postcard right here has some writing on it that's not dated or, or it's not an address to someone. Uh, this does say June of 1907 and it is to the Lenore Drug Company or the Lenore Book Company. Okay. And what that postcard is, is the prototype. In other words, this is probably the only postcard in existence that's like that right there. Okay. What they done was took the picture, they sent it to a postcard company, and they sent it back to them and says, this is what it'll look like, how many do you want? And okay. see, they put some numbers on it to determine, you know, as to what it was and all that. And see, that was two of our big um, postcard producers, was Lenore Book Company and Lenore Drug Company right. back in the early days. We also had June Shell, who was J.E. or J. June Shell. J Junius Shell. Yeah, now he produced a lot of them. There was an Earl Hardy, then uh, the Blues and the Davises, and there was a bunch of others that done different postcards. So there was a lot of different people around Lenore that did do the postcards. All right. That also tells us something about the waterworks, too, the year that uh, it came into being, too. Bruce, one of the things that interests me, too, I just had never noticed this before, but uh, all of these shots of the courthouse are taken from the same angle, uh, with one exception. That looks like that was taken uh, from up on North Main Street uh, looking right. south. The rest of them were taken from the square, apparently looking north. Right. Almost the same angle on every one of them. Do you have any idea? Why that? Well, it's just that I guess it took a better picture. Uh, is it, but see, and if you'll notice, most of them, they took them, and you see the square, which it doesn't have the monument, right. but then you have the, the, the monument and the monument. You see the monument there, but you have it here and have it here. Now, these postcards are very important because there's a couple of these that says, Automobile Day in Lenore. So they had a big celebration about bringing automobiles into Lenore. Then this is a very important postcard right. here because this is 1917. This was the first soldiers to leave Lenore going to World War I. Right. And it showed a picture of those. So that's a very important postcard. Yes, I have seen that one before. And, uh, uh, and this Automobile Day, is this Automobile Day? Do you know yeah. what? Yeah, Automobile Day. Do you have any idea what year the Automobile Day was? I don't think that these have a postmark on them. Uh, this one has one, but I cannot. It's, it's blacked out. You just can't see it. And see, this one has no postmark on it. But uh, see, this one is published by Lenore Book Company. And it does show a, a few. Oh, there's probably 30 automobiles in that picture right there. And then this one is the, the colored one, okay. Now, this is another thing that, this one was produced by the Lenore Book Company. This one was produced by Ballou and Davis, who was Major Ballou, that was Gordon Ballou's dad, and I.I. Davis, who had a mercantile store in downtown Lenore. Okay, 
guess if we had uh, an automobile today, uh, day to day, it wouldn't take very long to get 30 cars there, do you? No, one dealer could bring them in, you know. <laughs> in a few minutes, probably. Absolutely. Okay. Bruce, it looks like you've got shots of different places uh, in downtown Lenoir and uh, maybe at different time periods as well. Uh, this little building here, I think, was at one time that housed the news topic and also the library and maybe some other things too uh, at one time or another. That was known as the Pioneer Library. That's what this postcard says, that it's okay. showing the Pioneer Library. And, you know, what I couldn't figure out was it was on Hickory Street. And it took me a long time of figuring that that is 321A right there going to Hickory. That's Mulberry Street. Street right. So it was known as Hickory Street because it went to Hickory. And uh, then we just have a different view here. If you would, could understand, the, the little building on your far right right here would be about where Teague Furniture Company was on a corner. You would see the monument in the center, or the Confederate monument in the center of this section over here. And that's where that picture was taken. This is actually coming off of West Avenue and you got North Main Street or Main Street going in front of those buildings. Right. Uh, this is one of the, of the first or one of the first filling stations or gas stations in Lenore. And this just shows a bunch of businesses in Lenore and we know that it's, it's after 1913 because of uh, this building, which is beside of uh, the county offices, a street in between it, was the Irvin's Men's Shop. Okay. And that's where the Lenore Book Company was housed at. Okay, that's the building that uh, Keith Willis is renovating right now, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then here you have two different views, and it's, they're both North Main Street. One's looking north and one's looking south, but it shows basically the same buildings, and, but then one's color and one's black and white. Now this is earlier because the Lenore Book Company that was here, it actually started out in this building right here, uh, which is actually the third building down from the corner. It's uh, where Krolls was for so many years in that okay. building right there, and that's where Lenore Book Company started out. Okay. Uh, this is a picture of South Main Street. Uh, you would be, Bernhardt and Siegel's would be on your right. You'd be looking across the street. And this just shows a bunch of oxen, but it was funny that they're pulling a steam engine. <laughs> that maybe the engine went bad, I don't know. But uh, that was an interesting postcard. And see, it's a colored postcard, and I believe that postcard there is 1909. Then you have the first fire department uh, right. that was over on Mulberry Street. And uh, I understand that, that you have the bell that was on this wagon at one time or another. Okay, we do have some fire department memorabilia and perhaps that bell is in it. Right now it's on display at City Hall. Yeah. And uh, it'll be there probably for a little while longer. Uh, but we do have some uh, fire department stuff. By the way, this might be a good time, Bruce, to plug the book that the fire department did last year uh, about the history of the fire department. It has that picture and some others as well as a lot of their scrapbook articles in it. Uh, we do have it here for sale at the Caldwell Heritage Museum and the fire department has it for sale. And I'm sure they'd be glad to sell you as many copies as you like. Yeah, and it is a really interesting book. Very much so. It's a good part of history. Uh, this postcard here is the Rufus Gwynn Ford Motor Company. And, you know, I understand it was the first Ford Motor Company in town. Now, it, there's some discrepancy there, but, you know, from all of my reports is that he was the first one. Is that where Western Auto is now? Yes, sir. Ah, I thought yes, that looked sir. like that building. And this next postcard, this is another one that was produced by Blue and Davis. And it's just looking from North Main Street south, and it's more or less just showing the, uh, the monument is basically what they're doing. You know, the monument was photographed so many times, you know, that and the courthouse was the two the points, points right. of Lenore, North Carolina was our, you know, those two things. 
And I don't know, I guess it's just me, but I still haven't figured out today why they took that real pretty courthouse with them columns and done away with it and made it look like a box, you know. But, I suppose uh, a lot of things are done in the name of progress. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I really like this postcard. This is a real colorful postcard. And what this is, is uh, you're looking you're on South Main Street looking north. This corner would be where the old mutual savings and loan used to be. Right. Bernhardt and Siegel's would be over here on the left. Now if you'll notice, you see this side of the street, this postcard here, which I always think of it as the Wild West days because of its look, but it is the same street as that right there, but it's just showing, you know, the, the east side okay. of, uh, South Main Street. Then you have the Caldwell Motor Company that was where, that's where W. Shaw Furniture Company is now. And uh, then we've seen in a, another view of the, that was called the main business building of Lenore. And that's where the Lenore Hardware Company was. Uh, it's where Mutual Savings and Loan actually started out where Red's Men's Shop was. Our Todd's menswear a little bit later on. Yeah, yeah. And I believe the Antique Mart is in there now. Yeah, the Antique Market. Which look, it kind of gives you a feeling of another day there, too, to see those awnings. You know, all those buildings had awnings then. And, uh, you know, they don't have those anymore. I remember when there were storefronts and you did a lot of window shopping, too. So uh, I can remember as a small kid that a lot of those awnings were still there. And I used to right. run and try and jump up and touch them, you know. So. <laughs> Those awnings were handy if you got caught in town in a shower of rain, too. Well, you see, that's what's so good about it. Back in those days, uh, you know, a lot, everybody came to town, and the right. town was plumb full of people. On Saturday, and, uh, particularly. And if it came up a rainstorm, then those awnings were real good, and it helped. And maybe the people would go in the store and look around and maybe buy something. Also a good place to stand and visit with your neighbor a few minutes, too, in the shade of the awning. Uh, I remember the across the street where the First Union National Bank started out on Saturdays, there just used to be just a line of people that would stand there and talk to one another. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. You know, there was a lot of that going on. I'm going to ask you a question, John. Do you have any idea how many grocery stores in 1948 was on Main Street? No, I have no idea. Well, see, that's what's so good about this is that the people came to town or they actually lived in town. On North Main Street, there were 12 grocery stores and there were only two on South Main. The rest of them were on North Main. Okay. And there were actually in the town of Lenore in 1948, there were 77 grocery stores. Okay. Now, those that were on North Main Street, are you talking about from the square up to... Carlime Hotel or further on? A little up the further up. You, oh, further you up the probably street. out. I, the furthest I can get out is about where the railroad tracks was. Okay. See, there was a store right there on that corner. Right, yes. And that's. Like maybe a couple. Yeah, there was, you know. And so, uh, but I thought that was an interesting fact that I got to looking at a book that I've borrowed from uh, Sally uh, Templeman. Her dad came to town here in 1948 and started prescribing eyeglasses. Yeah, Dr. Templeman, right. And uh, so he bought this book in 1948, and it's a Lenore Register book, and it has all these businesses in it. And uh, I've been trying to talk her out of it, but to no avail, to no avail. She says it's part of their history, and I understand, you know, right. and it is. Uh, all right. These two postcards here, which it took me a while to figure these out. Uh, this is a later picture of downtown Lenore, and uh, it, uh, there again you're looking at the monument. There's just a little bit difference in the color, but if you notice they are the same postcard, but this one has no cars in it. This one has cars in it, but it's the same photograph. Okay. So the only thing I can figure out is at this time they drew some photo some. Uh, cars into this photograph to make it just a little bit different, probably published by a different person. But that's the difference that we get into. That's the reason there's so many that are 
you know, different postcards up Basically the Basically same, but a little bit different. A little bit different or a little different time, or maybe it's colored or black and white or linen or on a white card. Okay. Uh, Bruce, you mentioned earlier that the uh, Confederate Memorial was a focal point for photographers and a subject of some postcards. Uh, looks like you've got three uh, postcards there of the monument. Yeah. The, the one in the middle, I feel like, in my opinion, is the most important because it does say the Caldwell's Confederate Monument dedicated June the 3rd, 1910. And that one is actually postmarked on uh, June the 13th. June the 13th. So there's about 10 days difference right. from the time that it actually was dedicated. But you see, they handed these out that day on June the 3rd. And the other two postcards, which are in circles, you're just, one of them you're looking North Main and the other one you're looking South Main. Now, this one was published or put out by the county or maybe Lenore Book Company, I'm not sure. But the other two were published and put out by uh, the Ballou family. They're the ones that done that right there. And matter of fact, one of these is going to Gordon Blue the, when he was up in uh, Maryland at one time yeah. going to school. All right. So uh, the Confederate Memorial then has, was the subject for uh, postcards, uh, several different ones. Were these, you said they were handed out. Were they handed out or sold? Or I think they handed them out because they also had the little button okay. and uh, several other things that they handed out. And I actually have a paperweight that is mm -hmm. pretty rare. And so, so it uh, must have been a very memorable day then if they gave that many souvenirs out free rather than selling them. Yeah. I suspect today would be selling them. Right. And you know, GWF Harper wrote the speech that right. was done on that day. And the way I understand it, I don't think he gave the speech, but he wrote the speech and somebody else presented it. I believe Mr. Clark gave the speech, if, yeah. uh, if I so, remember correctly. Uh, that was a memorial day in our right. town. Another memorial day was when they moved it. Right. <laughs> okay, Bruce, the education is something, of course, that's been a big part of my life, and looks like you've got uh, one picture of the Lenore graded schools, or, or several pictures of one school building, maybe I should say. Yeah. John, this first picture right here, it came out of the, the Major Ballou family. Uh, it's, it's actually just a photograph, but it's in a postcard size of the first grade school that was in Lenore. And, uh, you know, if you'll notice, there's not a box on the front of that thing. It still has the arched door. And then in this one, you see that there is a, a different box view, and they've changed where the bell tower is. And in some of them, you'll see the bell, and some of them you won't. So evidently, they took this thing down after a while, or they restructured this dome in here a little bit, and it might have been down for a while, and then they put it back up. These postcards date from about 1905 up to, I think, about 1916 is the last one. And we do know that the school was done away with about 1923. And uh, like I was saying, I think I understand that this one corner right here is still part of or inside that one section of the First Baptist Church down there. We remodeled that thing, and we did find a, uh, a paper in there of 1922 okay. in that building. So, you know, they were remodeling at that time, maybe. And so... Uh, okay. I don't know whether any of that building is in the present structure of First Baptist Church or not, Bruce, but certainly their building uh, behind the main auditorium does look like that. Uh, so even if it's a new structure, they built it uh, to complement that school building and to remind us of it. And perhaps somebody who knows the history of First Baptist Church might be able to tell us if indeed a part of it mm -hmm. is included in uh, the First Baptist Church building. Well, uh, since we're talking about education, maybe it would be a pretty good time to maybe plug your book on, uh, what was the name of that book? It's called The Most American Thing. The Most American Thing, and it's the history of education in Caldwell County? That's right. 
And that is on sale here at the Heritage Museum. Right, or at the Education Foundation, and all the proceeds to the book go to the Education Foundation. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. We, we're glad you've done that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Bruce, looks like that Lenore recognized they were a part of North Carolina in these. Yeah, these stories. are actually known as state cards, but in other words, it was greetings from Lenore, North Carolina. And some of them showed different kind of bushes or whatever that had to do with the Lord. And then they had the state capitol building there and here. And some of these things, there's uh, this one right here actually just has a little stamp. And they had this postcard and they would just stamp the word Lenore on there. Right. Then the other ones are actually engraved in the postcard like the other things. So they were made, you know, specifically for Lenore. But, you know, they probably had the same thing in Hickory or Morganton or Wilkesboro that had the same thing at right. this era. This is uh, somewhere between 1950 and I think the last postmark on these things is 1957. So that's right. about when they were. Yes, I remember that style of postcard. I guess they got tired of photographing the monument in the courthouse. <laughs> probably so. <laughs> Okay, it looks like there's some church pictures there, too. Yes, sir. Uh, now, you know, this church right here, uh, it could be First Baptist Church or it could be College Avenue. Uh, I don't know. It just uh, says Baptist Church. It right? just says Baptist Church on there. And I do know that it is real close to downtown Lenore, the way the, the stores and the building is over here on the far left. But, you know... If somebody could tell me about that one, if they remember that church, then I, I would love to find out about it because okay. this, this postcard is not postmarked or nothing. Oh, it is 1910. Right. We might also uh, remind the people, too, that College Avenue's original name was South Lenore Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it did not become College Avenue until they moved into the structure that they're in now, which was, I think, in the late 1940s. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other one's certainly a uh, uh, Lenora landmark too, First Baptist Church. Yes, uh, this is the First Baptist Church. Now, if you'll notice, this little section over here on the far right is almost identical to the little section that's off on the right of this schoolhouse right, right. here, mm -hmm. except they took the roof off and made that a flat roof right there. Okay. So that, that's where I got that information that that was still part of the grade school. Well, certainly the left. structure is similar at least, if yeah. it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, then here we have the, uh, is, this is the Meth First Methodist Church. I believe that's First Presbyterian. Presbyterian, okay, right. this is the Methodist that's right the here. That's First Methodist, right. Okay, I get these churches mixed up. Uh, but here you see a difference also, you have colors. Here you have a black and white, and here you have a colored one. Then this one also has a picture of the manse, which was on North Main Street, about where uh, Ebony Funeral, Ebony Funeral, Funeral Home, is, Home I believe. is right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this church here, if you'll notice that in the early days they had a round section. Well then, they kind of kept it when they went with this right here, when they remodeled. And I'm not sure when that remodeling was, but, you know, this postcard could become very important. I came by there the other day, and all of these steps were gone. They were clearing that out. And I don't know what they got in mind in their remodeling. They might be going to do away with the steps and put a ramp down one side for handicapped, because, you know, it's kind of hard for handicapped people to get right. in that church. They are doing some remodeling, and I have heard a little bit about what it is, but for this moment I can't tell you what it is uh, but one of the things uh, the First Methodist Church I think has character Bruce if you've ever been inside it oh it, uh, it, it certainly it, does it has a very worshipful atmosphere and I think part of that is because of the age of it and uh, so I hope and I'm glad that they chose to remodel their building rather than to uh, destroy it and build a new edifice well I know Ed Tudor who's the baseball scout down here, he, he goes up there and he said, I'll donate money as long as you don't mess with the sanctuary. Okay. So he, he, he had a stipulation on his money. All right. Uh, right here, this is the only two postcards that I know of that are actually on the post office. 
And uh, this is a, a real early view, and it actually says that it's nighttime. You see a little light on right there. And you see the word roses on this building right here. So it was before Dave Vaughn's drugstore was built. Roses 5 and 10, yes. And uh, I believe this thing was dedicated in 1922. I don't remember the year. Uh, I think we need to point out, Bruce, it's not the current post office. Though. Absolutely, right. This is on uh, West Avenue. Right. It's the, uh, it's, I still call it the post office building. I'm not sure what's in there right now. Uh, but uh, I still think of it as the post office every time I go by, even though I can't mail a letter there. They've got some office. I think there's some offices, offices in, in there, there, yes. Yeah. Looks like you have some good overviews of the town of Lenore, again, from uh, different periods. By the way, I think that is the little the church building we were talking about a while ago be, that possibly was mm -hmm. uh, South Lenore Baptist Church. Uh, but tell us about these views. Well, they're called bird's eye view. And uh, what it does is it shows either downtown or close to downtown or off to one side. It's just different views. But these top four cards were basically all taken from the same spot. And if you could think of uh, up behind what was known as South Lenore or College Avenue Baptist Church, Spain uh, on Hill. Spain Hour Hill up there, you know, at one time they had a big water tank up, way up on top of the hill up there. And that's where this view was taken from. And uh, so, and actually you have kind of a, I, I don't know what that, that's called a brown card, I think. I've never, I've seen a few of them. Then you have a white card, and then you have a white colored card. Then you actually have a photograph. So, you know, and if you'll notice, this one has no leaves in front of it, but this one does, but they still have the same horse in it. Okay. And this looks like a later time period than this one, too. Right. Much later, because right. the town's much uh, more thickly settled. You, you still see the fence line right there. This right. is the same fence in all of these right here. Uh, this card right here was taken from uh, up on what's known as Academy Hill. And, and that's what these right here were too. And what you're looking at is if you could think of Major Bentley's roofing place, which was the old Cobble Dairy. Right. That would be to the right. There's a house that he owns that the top part was burnt and he tore it off and made it a flat roof. That is this house right here. And that is Banks Haley's grandfather's house. I made him a picture of that because I thought it was real unusual that it had the three Johnny houses or outhouses. They had different Thank you names. for correcting it. <laughs> okay. uh, is this the area, Bruce, that is now Prospect Street, um, High Street? Yes, sir, up above. Uh, okay. Yeah, and it was known near as Academy a, Hill. And near Harper Furniture. and Yeah, up there about where Gene Bush lives right now. Well, I don't know where Gene Bush lives. Okay, he lives <laughs> on actually on High Street up there. Okay. And so that's where this was taken. and this one and this one, but you see they're just different times. They're basically the same, but just a, a little bit different. And uh, this one was actually taken in the snow time. So, uh, and then this postcard right here is the only one I've seen that's like this, but they took a picture of High Brighton Mountain through the trees from Davenport College. So, uh, that's actually listed as a picture from Davenport College. So. Okay. A few moments ago, we mentioned the Lenore Graded School, and that was the beginning of what would eventually become the Lenore City School System, and of course, Lenore High School, I think at one time it was called Central High School even, uh, was the only high school in the city um, at that time and in the city system. And uh, the, that building was built, I think, in the early 1920s, and they uh, moved down from the location where First Baptist Church is uh, to this area. Yeah. And this is looks like you have some pictures of the Lenore High School. Yes, sir. Uh, this is, is one of the earlier views of it. Uh, there's several pictures that are in a couple of books that actually shows an automobile out here in front. and. Uh, but this is basically the same picture, but uh, it's on College Avenue looking toward Lenore High School. And then, of course, this one 
is kind of an oddball because it has an entrance from down there on Harper Avenue, which there's a rock wall that's five foot high. Don't so, think it could be, do you? No, sir. This is one of those that they kind of drew something in to make it look uh -huh. interesting to the people. And then, of course, you know, with Lenore High School, you also had the high school band building, and you have two different views of it right here. And uh, these are early postcards. They're... Uh, I think one was late 20s and one was in the middle 30s. And uh, it's showing the the one half. You know, that, that band building was built as one half of the band building and that's when Captain Harper done the building and furnished the money for it. And if you'll notice, there's a little out building here. All right, eventually in the, when was it, the early 60s, they built the other half of that thing and the county schools built it. So okay. there's actually a full band building there now is the way it was supposed to start out. Then, of course, the Chamber of Commerce put out this postcard and it is of the, the Lenore High School Band. And I'm, I think I'm correct. I think it's either 1954 or 1955 of this band right here because I know that Floyd Boston, who's a preacher from out in Gamble, he's standing right up here, so I know that, and he graduated in 55, I believe, or 56, so. Uh, Why would there be an interest in a postcard of the Lenore High School Band? Well, it's like it says on the back that this is the famous band from Lenore that has won X amount of superiors, you know, in a row, you know, and this band was known all over the United States as being one of the best and having the most superiors of any band in the United States. Okay. We might comment, Bruce, too, that uh, this Lenore High School building now is the home of the LHS apartments, and the auditorium is still there, and it's used occasionally for civic functions. And the Lenore High Band, uh, there are a group of interested people who are trying to restore the Lenore High School Band building, and I'm sure they would appreciate any help that anybody can give them in the restoration project. Yeah, they're trying to raise money to, you know, restore this thing. It was, it's in such bad shape, it's going to take a lot of money to do it. And they want to set it up as a museum to Captain Harper and the band and all of that, you know. And I think it will also have some music studios in it for um, yeah. different teaching of music and that time it'll be a business as well as a museum, I yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope people will get behind that project and, and help them out uh, to preserve a part of our history uh, as far as the band is concerned and as far as uh, Lenore, it's, uh, Lenore's dedication to music is concerned. Now right here is two cards, I about forgot them there a little bit later. Uh, these are the newer school uh, band, band buses, buses that they had. They had two for the students and one for the instruments. And then here you see it with the other half that's built on. I forgot I had that one right there. So this shows it before the half and this shows it after the half. Okay, and so this is the building now that they are trying to restore. That's what you see right now is that building right there. All right. Uh, Bruce, what's the significance of the car on this postcard? Well, it's a postcard that came from the Pontiac place in Lenore. Uh, and it's showing a 1936 Silver Street Touring Car, four-door, eight-cylinder. And uh, this was actually addressed from a guy in Lenore and he was sending off for a catalog. Now, now this is what was so amazing about this. I called Banks trying to find out where this place was and he couldn't remember but I said it was sent off to a fireworks place and he named that fireworks place in Ohio because he had sent off for their catalog about the same time. Okay. So back then you know you could have fireworks in North Carolina. Right. And so they were sending to this place to get their catalog of 1936 on their fireworks, you know, so. All right, and then the next one is? Well, these are some of your newer postcards that have been made. Uh, this is the only one I've ever seen, but it's of the City Service Cleaners, who was owned by uh, Tommy. I'm sorry. And I Joe Hall. Okay, Hall, okay. And Tommy. 
Okay, Tommy. Lived up on High Brighton Drive. Forgive us, Tommy, for not remembering yeah, your last name. His son actually long, owns this place right now. Okay. So, uh, and then here is one of the American Legion home, which is on North Main Street. Right. And I actually have a photograph of the first American Legion home, which was in this spot, but it was a house that sit up on a hill. It was like a big old two-story house that somebody donated to this place. And what they done was tore the house down and graded out to get down level with the ground instead of having three flights of stairs to go up to the house. Then this is a postcard I ran across and it is of the uh, Smith Crossroads restaurant, mm -hmm. which if you were going out the Wilkesboro Road, it would be on the right hand side of you as you were going about where the Holiday Inn is, not quite, but close to that. Right. Or it's not the Holiday Inn now, it's the Ramada Inn. I think it's changed its name again and I've forgotten what the new name is. I believe I did see them hanging a new sign out there the other day. Right. So they just can't. Bruce, I have eaten there at the Smith Crossroads restaurant. I remember it was, a, a, they prepared very good food. I like yeah. liver and onions, and that was one of the good things that they prepared there at Smith uh, Crossroads Restaurant. Absolutely. They, they did have some good food. This postcard right here is where the Carlisle Hotel was torn down, and this is Quantania. Right. This was built by the, was it the Presbyterian? I believe it's the Presbyterian Church, yes. Right. Uh -huh. And in all honesty, this is the best thing that's ever happened to this town because it does help a lot of retired or, you know, uh, people that are on fixed incomes. And uh, my mother lived there for, gosh, I don't know, 17, 18 years. Mm -hmm. and so, the apartments are nice. I have been there and visited people there. And yes, uh, it is a very good thing that it's uh, happened to Lenore. And they've actually built another section in the back, back there, uh, of a new set of apartments, you yeah. know. Right. So, mm -hmm. One of the most photographed things, of course, Bruce, in the town of Lenore was the Carl Lime Hotel. And it looks like that you've got several photographs there or several postcards of it. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess there was more of it. I don't know whether there was more of it or more of the courthouse. But this is probably the earliest right here of the Carl Lime Hotel, or actually at that time it was called the Archer Hotel. Right. And actually I found another proprietor of that thing at one time and I've got that name at the house and I forgot to bring it. But if you'll notice, these postcards right here look exactly the same, there's four of them. But if you'll notice that this one has no fence, but this one has a fence. This one is taking a little bit different shot, but this one is a colored post postcard. So they're all basically the same picture but there's just a little bit of a change. They added a fence or they didn't have the fence. This is a time that it changed and went to that other man that I can't recall his name right now. But this was right after the Archer Hotel. And then if you'll see here, this one says the Archer Hotel. And then you have the same picture, but in a brown card. And it says the Carlisle Hotel. And then this is one of the a good view with the color that they had in it of the Carlisle Hotel. And then you get those where they changed it and took these, some of these domes out of the corner and they actually put a drive through right here in this one. And this was the first of that. And then they went with this postcard. And see, these two are basically the same, but you see the cars have changed. They're different eras. Uh, one might be early 30s and one might be late 30s or early 40s. And then this is what we, as a colored picture, it's what we actually remember the Carlisle Hotel is looking like. But this was actually the last postcard that was ever made. Well, Bruce, it's been a delight to have you again today. Perhaps uh, you might uh, want to give people your phone number and uh, in case they have facts or items or anything that would be of benefit to you. Well, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of postcards and I know that I don't have them all. You know, there's, there's at least 10, 12, 15 that I know of that I don't have yet. So I'm still looking for postcards. But uh, if they want to call me, it's 754-7330. Or if they want to see me, get me out of the phone book, I'm listed as T, 
Bruce Craig, and I would be, you know, just tickled to death with any phone calls that anybody wants to give me. And we certainly would like to invite you to visit us at the Caldwell County Heritage Museum, too. We're located at 112 Vaden Street. That's right behind Davenport School, uh, just off of College Avenue. Uh, thank you for watching us today. This program was produced by the Caldwell County Public Information Office and by the Caldwell Heritage Museum. Please visit and support our Caldwell Heritage Museum, 112 Vaden Street, Lenore, North Carolina, now in association with Lenore and Caldwell County History on Facebook.